everybody. Welcome to our first vodcast in the cell reproduction unit. Here we're going to focus on the first of the two types of cell division we're going to look at, um, mitosis. The second is meiosis, and we'll address that in a different vodcast down the road. Uh, today we'll wrap up our little uh, chat um, on looking at some of the differences between plant and animal cells um, as they go through this process, all in preparation for you guys to get a chance to look at these yourself here in the lab. So let's jump right in. Now we're going to pick right up where we left off on the last one. Cell division. Um, this is really important for cells. We know that cells come from pre-existing cells and we know that we are made up of many, 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 many cells that came from a single cell. So there had to be a process for that one cell to first divide into two those two into four, four to eight, and so on. So we're gonna look at how cells go about that. And we know from our last talk and lab that cells get bigger, they grow. But when they do that, there is a certain trade-off in that the bigger they get, the less efficient diffusion is. And so there is a limit to that. And at some point in time, that surface area to volume ratio is just gonna get way too low and the efficiency of the cell to move things around isn't going to be as good. So this is one of the signals that says to a cell, hey, it's time to divide. So before they divide though, they have to make sure that the new cells that are gonna be there um, have all of the correct materials and have everything those cells need to live. So before this process happens, everything needs to double up so that when the cell divides, we divide it out and each new cell has what it needs. A couple of ways in which cells go through um, and divide. The first one um, is in eukaryotes and for those guys like us, our cells go through a process called mitosis. So this is just a single division process. I take a cell, we split it into two, totally identical to the cell that it came from. There's also meiosis, and we'll spend some time with this. This is a really important process. It's a cell division process where, at the end of it all, we create gametes. We create the sex cells that are going to fuse together to create new offspring down the road. Now, prokaryotes, your bacteria, they're just a single cell. They don't need to worry about finding a mate or anything like that. So they go through, um, when they divide, it's a similar process to mitosis, but we give it kind of a different name. It's called prokaryotic fission, and fission means to split. So they do kind of, I mean, in, in essence, it's the same as what happens in mitosis, but because their chromosomes and their DNA is arranged a little differently, it's not an exact connection. So let's take a look at the cell cycle. So this means the life of a cell as it starts off as a single cell and then ends up as two. In the cell cycle, and I'll get into this in a little bit more detail here, there are, we can, we can look at and break down moments of time. Now the cell doesn't really know it's in this particular stage, but it helps us understand what's going on inside the cell and we can break it down to better understand how the cell works. So the sort of business as usual phase of the cell where it spends most of its time is called interphase. This is the cell doing its job, living out what it needs to do, you know, just doing its thing. Within interphase, I can break it down into three pieces. I have my G1 growth, the growth one. This is its initial phase. It's going to grow a little bit. It's going to be a brand new cell. It's going to start working like it's supposed to. At a point in time when it gets the signal that it's going to need to start the process to get ready to split, we move into the S phase, which is synthesis. This is where the DNA, all of your chromosomes, the material that tells and controls the cell um, doubles. It's going to duplicate. From there, once that's happened, then the second growth phase begins. And here I'm going to start prepping the cell for division. There's going to be replication of different organelles. And then the next thing you know, we're ready for the big one. We're ready for mitosis, the actual splitting of the nuclear material. So that's the first thing that's gonna happen here, okay, is we're gonna break apart everything that was in the nucleus. And we can break that down into four pieces too and we'll talk about that. Once the, the nuclear contents have divided, then you're into what's called cytokinesis, 
So cytokinesis is the actual splitting of the cell. And what do you have at the end? Two brand new cells. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about what goes on during all of these pieces. So an interphase, longest part of the cell cycle, as I mentioned, business as usual uh, time. You know, you can pretty much pick a cell and chances are you're gonna find it somewhere in interphase. Initially, we get an increase in the mass of the cell, so it's gonna grow, growth one, okay? So it is a little smaller when it first starts out and it grows a little bit. Once we hit the need to divide, we're gonna move into the synthesis. So again, S stands for the synthesis phase, okay? And the DNA is gonna be duplicated. So eukaryotic cells, all of our DNA is set up into chromosomes. This is our DNA, our information, um, the genetic, our genes, right? Wrapped up around proteins. And when they're coiled up like that, we call them a chromosome, okay? So for us, example, we have 46 chromosomes and all of our chromosomes come in pairs kind of like socks, okay? So we have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, okay? They do come in pairs because we have a mom and a dad. Mom contributed 23, dad contributed 23. And voila, here you are. Then we're gonna take the cytoplasmic components and we're gonna double them up and we're gonna prepare for the process of dividing. And that is the second growth phase. So all of that wrapped up, interphase. Then comes the important piece, mitosis. First off, mitosis is where we divide the nuclear contents. So this is where we're going to divide the chromosomes. And it's a very systematic process the cell goes through to divide up all of the genes and the genetic material. Once that happens, then we're going to get a division of the cytoplasm and actual pinching in and separation of the cells. So the four pieces of mitosis. First, prophase, okay? This is where we're gonna be able to actually see chromosomes. They're gonna condense. They're gonna get really, 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 really tightly packed and coiled and they coil, 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 coil way up. And this is where we can see them. Remembering at this point in time too, they're doubled already. We've already replicated everything, okay? So all of the DNA coils up and we lose the nuclear membrane, okay? Meaning it's gonna dissolve away. So there's no more nuclear membrane encasing this genetic material. Then the chromosomes are gonna line right up at the equator of the cell. Meaning if this is my cell, right? So if I have my cell here, okay? My chromosomes literally are going to line up down the middle. Okay, and there are these tracks that the chromosomes attach to and run on so that they know which way to go. So they're gonna line right up. During the next phase, anaphase, this is where my duplicated chromosome attached at the middle of the cell breaks apart. And one of the chromosomes heads in towards what direction of the cell? The other one heads toward the other. And we call that moving towards the poles. And that would look you know, kind of cartoony, but that would look a little something like, so if I had two chromosomes in this cell, okay, then each chromosome would be pulling apart and heading, like these ones are going in that direction, these ones are going in this direction, pulling apart toward the opposite sides so that when the cell actually splits, each one has what it needs. And then the last phase of the nuclear division is called telophase, and the cell actually starts. This is where we get a blend of the actual division of the cell and the final pulling apart of the nuclear contents, and the cell begins to separate. Either it's going to pinch in, or what we call cleave. So cleavage begins if it's an animal cell, or the cell will literally construct a cell plate or a new cell wall right down the middle if it's a plant cell. Okay, so that's one of the biggest differences between animal and plant mitosis is that a cell in an animal is gonna pinch in like this and pull apart. Plant cells, because of their very rigid cell wall, can't do that. So they like build and almost like putting up a brick wall, put a cell plate right down the center to separate them out. So what's the whole point of mitosis? The point is to make sure that the cells at the end of it all have the same chromosome count that the original parent cell had. And because we wanna make sure all the information's there and that everything is happening the way it's supposed to. The purpose though for mitosis is we're creating more cells. So what might be some reasons we would need more cells? 
Well, a big reason is growth. Okay, I hate to break it to you, but you have never been this big your whole life. You started off as a little baby. And as your cells divide and we added more cells to you, you grew. So growth um, is a very, very important part of mitosis and something we do a lot of very early on. Repair, you get a cut, okay? Your skin heals because those cells are going through mitosis to repair where the break in the skin was. And then general maintenance, okay? Our cells wear out. We need to replace them with new ones so that they can continue to work. Example, your skeleton is made up of many cells, these bone cells called osteocytes, and they create the bone tissue material. Well, they wear out and we need to replace them. And so about every two years or so, you are replacing, in essence, your entire skeleton as we get new cells coming in, okay? Your blood, your red blood cells that carry oxygen, they're replaced about every 120 days. So maintenance is a big piece. Some cells, unfortunately, we haven't figured out how to get our bodies to repair and to replace damaged cells. Our nerves um, are a big one. So that's why you know somebody gets paralyzed. Um, if we've severed that signal in the nerves, those cells don't go through mitosis again. They don't um, repair themselves as well. Some do, but a lot don't. So here's an example of a cell, and it's a parent cell with one chromosome. So we're gonna just we're gonna break this down to bare bones and look at one chromosome heading through the process. So here we are. We could be in the G1 right now, okay? And so we have one chromosome, it's not duplicated yet. Well, let's say we get the signal, okay? And we're gonna duplicate our chromosome. Okay, so here we are, we've moved into S phase. And I'm gonna kind of jump over um, in this next one, I'm gonna kind of jump over G2 and the whole process of mitosis because once this has happened and this chromosome lines up and the cell splits, we get two new cells, what we call daughter cells. And these daughter cells are genetically identical, not size identical though, they would be a little bit smaller, but genetically identical to the parent cell up here at the very top which is what we want. If my skin cell is gonna divide to make new skin cells, I wanna make sure that those new skin cells are identical to the ones that they came from. So, I'm sure you wanna see what some of these look like for real, okay? Because it's you know kind of easy with cartoons, but what do these really look like? So let's take a look. Let's start with a plant, okay? Here's a plant cell. I know it's a plant. Why? Cell wall. So here I am, I am in what's going to be the very, very late stages um, of interphase. We're gonna start heading into prophase of mitosis here, okay? And boom, here we are, prophase of mitosis. I know it's prophase. I've lost my nucleus, so I can't see the nuclear membrane anymore. And look at how condensed all of these chromosomes are. Now they're visible. Now I can really, really see them. Okay, and this is where we could figure out and count how many a cell has. Okay, here we are in metaphase. Here all the chromosomes are lined up right down the middle of the cell. All of these fibers here, these are called spindles. These are those tracks I mentioned that the chromosomes are going to separate and pull across on. Anaphase, okay, so here we have anaphase. The chromosomes have begun to split, so this one heads in that direction, and that one goes in that direction for each of the pairs, or sorry, for each, excuse me, the, each of the duplicated chromosomes that exist in this cell. All of them line, boom, 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 and split. And lastly, telophase, okay? Here I have all of the chromosomes now. My nucleus is beginning to reform. The chromosomes are starting to unwind again, and you can see the formation of the cell plate. As this builds, it's gonna get thicker and thicker, and then I'm gonna have one new cell over here and the second cell over here, okay? So there you go, plant cell mitosis. So what about animal cells? So what about animal cells? What about one of something like your cell? This is, I don't have a ton of the other ones. You're gonna actually get a chance to see these in the lab, okay? And this is from a whitefish cell, and so not unlike what would happen to some of your cells. And this is metaphase. Okay, I can look right at it and know here, my chromosomes, all 80 of them, that's what a whitefish has, 80 chromosomes, are lined right up down the center. I've got my spindle, all those fibers, all those tracks that those chromosomes are gonna run down. And lastly, here we have, or not lastly, but the next phase is anaphase. 
I can see my chromosomes have split, whereas before they were right down the center of the cell. Now each duplicated chromosome is running towards the poles, but I still have a very uniform looking cell. So that's how I know I'm still in anaphase. Okay, when the cells work their way to the poles, okay, this is actually very late telophase. Okay, the cell is almost, look at these right here, this cell membrane has almost reached each other. Okay, so I've got the chromosomes over here, one set, other set. Okay, we have this dipping in of the cell membrane as it pinches in, and as soon as these meet, I'm gonna have two brand new cells. So that's the process of mitosis. So um, go back, you can check this out as often as you like and hopefully get a sense of how these cells work. And then when you get to actually see them in the lab, it'll be pretty exciting. So take care and we will catch you guys later on.